All right, so in the tech garage, we're gonna be working on this Dell Inspiron 15. I believe it's the three series, three, three, zero, eight. Don't quote me on that, I forget the number. So this laptop actually belongs to a coworker of mine. This laptop, uh, use it for portability purposes when riding in his vehicle, just to get gather information and just help him with his work and whatever he needs to do to be more efficient and effective in his job. So i um, working with him at one time. Actually, this laptop came in very handy. We were able to get our work done a lot quicker and just be more efficient and accurate in our reports and details and everything that we were doing in our work. So uh, just recently, I was in his office and I saw that the laptop was working, asked him about it, and he pretty much said, hey, it's dead, it's not working, whatever. Well, the first issue that we had with it was the power port over here. Oh, wrong side. Power port over here, if I could get that in the video. Uh, it broke so I took it apart after I took it apart uh, I saw that the little uh, power connector over there that goes into the motherboard the solders solders came out broke so I resoldered it um, reflowed it with good uh, good solder and started working was able to power it back up so that worked out great put the laptop back together started powering up all was good um, Two other issues that we found with this laptop, and I should have recorded the last one. That actually would have been a pretty good video of just reflowing and soldering uh, the power port over here, but I'll get better at this and I'll do more videos as I go. So the second issue that we ran into this one is it's a little slow. Now, anybody that has an old laptop, just because it's old doesn't mean it's necessarily just bad and out of date or anything. They actually have some still uh, good lives in this. I believe this one is a... Uh, i3 i5 don't quote me but it's actually not too bad pretty decent for uh, what you want to do for pro productivity just workloads just getting receiving information so um, one of the issues with it is that it runs slow I mean just it runs slow it's an older laptop so it has a mechanical hard drive so what we're gonna be doing is and I'm waiting on Amazon to deliver it is I'm gonna be putting a solid-state hard drive in it I'm gonna be putting 128 gig solid-state hard drive 128 gig primarily because this thing is not holding tons and tons and tons of data it's just for pulling up data just doing research gathering collective so we want that to run as smoothly and as fast and efficiently as we can the second issue and we'll go ahead and power it up if you listen to it yeah that is very annoying quite annoying and it does it and it keeps doing it yeah very annoying so that's one of the issues that's going on with this laptop I'm gonna go ahead and power it down I don't want to put his personal information up there so every time you boot it up it powers it down doing some research on the forums it turns out that the issue with it is actually the CMOS battery which is this battery right here these things are probably like a dollar I got this as a four pack on Amazon for about maybe four dollars three dollars can't remember but is the issue with it so i mean real simple easy part but what gets you is that you have to take the whole stinking laptop apart just to change this piece and if i would have remember this issue when i took it apart to refix that piece over there i could have just knocked it out all at once so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to retake this laptop apart again and we're going to change out this battery uh, if amazon gets in here today then in this video we're also going to pop in a solid state hard drive also this laptop has windows 8 which is not my favorite i mean it's okay but we're gonna upgrade it to windows 10 solid state hard drive put in this battery give it that information uh get rid of that beeping sound put some fresh thermal paste on the fans on uh, not the fans on the heat sink so this thing can run a little cooler more efficient go through a copy of windows and uh put in some of that software we talked about so we'll get this thing running real good um, i'm gonna go ahead and post this camera on the tripod and uh, we're just gonna go through the repair and disassembly so before we get to that, first things first I like to do is uh, take off this battery, which hopefully I can do it one-handed, which I don't think it's possible. Okay, so yeah, lock, unlock. So this battery should slide right out. There we go. So the battery's taken out. Now on these electronics, before I go any further, and it's just apologies for the bad camera angle, what first thing I do is to make sure that's fully discharged. So I don't have to worry about any electric charge just hanging around in there or shorting anything out. I just go ahead, hold the power button for a few seconds. 
I just like to hold this for a few seconds. And what it does is it turns it on, discharges the capacitors, and just keeps any just electrical current that was retained from the, um, what you call it, from the battery. A lot of the times, if you're having a funky issue with your laptop and just can't explain it, the quickest, easiest thing to do, and a lot of tech supports, they tell you to do this, is to uh, unplug it from the wall, take out the battery, hold the power button for about 15 to 30 seconds, then plug the battery back in, turn it on, that fixes it. I know on the old compact laptops, that's actually was the easy quick fix for anytime you had an issue with the touchpad. So, all right, got that done. Next what we'll do is, uh, we'll take out all these screws over here, take all these panels out, take the backing out, and then um, we'll talk about what we'll do next. I'm gonna be using my cheap Walmart electronic repair kit, just kind of help us out here. So, um, I'm gonna record doing this do a little montage time lapse and then uh, we'll talk about it as we go as we come across anything that's interesting so here we go Okay, so we got all the screws out and took as many as I could see. Double check to see if I had any hidden screws or anything. And right now I don't have any screws in here that's gonna hinder me from going any further with this. So um, hard drive came out. This is a, let's see, let's see, let's see. Does this tell me how big it is? Uh, 5,400, 500 gig hard drive. I mean, 5,400 RPM is slow, but with a nice new, even if we put a 7200 in ID hard drive to speed it up, but we're gonna put an ID, uh, like I said, we're doing a solid state, that's gonna be a lot better. Another thing too, with these uh, these kits, these plastic pieces, they're great for, this is a guitar pick. We also have another one that's like a little bit of a, if I can get it out, it. There we go. This right over here, a prize, if you could get that in there, let's see, there we go. Uh, that's really great at prying out the side. So we got this off. Next we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart, turn around to the other side, and uh, we're going to pry out the keyboard and should get that going. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so that was actually really easy. It took less than five minutes. The top panel, I mean, it just pried right off. The key, anybody who's doing a laptop repair, I mean, this guitar pick works great. I know iFixit has um, ones like these, but they don't have that little groove that this one has, so you can actually slide them in better and they have better tools for sliding. But this worked real great. Uh, removing the keyboard, there's a few screws, took them off. So there's no hidden screws on this, which makes this really easy. So as you can look at it, here's our culprit this is what's actually causing us to get that beep sound on boot up so we're going to take this off and we're going to replace this battery uh, while i'm here i'm also going to take this motherboard out replace the thermal paste on it because i mean this computer is probably what five six seven years old fresh thermal paste couldn't hurt if we're here might as well fix it not that it's a problem but to prevent the future problem in the future we might as well change the thermal paste so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to take out these screws over here 
I'm gonna flip out this motherboard real quick and then we'll put in some fresh thermal paste. So let's put this back on and we'll record. Everything's pretty much taken apart. Uh, I have one screw that I missed on the bottom. That was for the CD-ROM drive. Need to disconnect that so I can free it. And the Wi-Fi card, there was one screw that was connected to the chassis that went right through it, so I missed that one. Took those two out. This motherboard slid out real easy. I'm not taking out the whole connectors because I'm not completely removing the motherboard per se. But as you can see, I have access to what I wanted right over here. So I got these three screws over here. We're going to take them out see if we can do this on camera. Do this live. See, one-handed. Can we do the one-handed operation? Probably not, but we could try. Okay. There we go. Two. Okay, one more. My big ugly hands are in the way. Sweet. All right, so as you can see, there we go. We have access to the prize. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a... Uh, Q-tip, wipe that off real quick, clean up on the bottom if it gets you right over here, clean it up real nice real quick, put some uh, new thermal paste on it, uh, probably going to use the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, that works really great, and like I said, fresh thermal paste is great, especially when these are old, and this will help kind of keep the temperatures manageable and help us get better speeds on this if it has boost clock. I'm not 100% sure the specs on this laptop, but we'll figure it out as we go, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Put thermal paste, put this thing back together, and then we'll fire it up. Gotta say, I do love Amazon. I ordered this yesterday, and it's here today. So, I love that one-day shipping. So, toss that out of here. Got 120 gig solid-state hard drive. I bought two of these. This is for another project I'm working on. But, uh, it's very simple. You just pretty much take out the old mount that holds the old hard drive in. Put the new mount in. Done. Very simple. So this computer is pretty much wrapped up. Normally what I do is I don't put all the screws in just yet, primarily in case something I didn't plug something in or if I missed something, I don't have a million screws to take apart. So I got all the bottom screws not plugged in, just enough to just kind of hold it, start it up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop in this hard drive. Whoa. I'm gonna pop in this hard drive into this mount, boot it up and get it squared away. Take out the old battery, old battery is done. There's actually a little trick, which I'll probably do a side video on it just to kind of test to see if this is good. And um, I'll show you in just a second how we do that. But got the old battery out, new batteries in, computers put back together. Everything seems to be fitting in with no issues. Rule of thumb that I recommend for these computers, don't force anything. If you force it and it doesn't seem right, double check. Make sure you don't have a hidden screw. If you have a hidden screw, make sure you get it out. So fresh thermal paste, new battery, solid state hard drive. And we're going to go ahead and pop in Windows 10. And uh, should be running good. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit. I'm not going to show you how to install this. I mean, this is just, what, how many screws are holding this? If any, there's actually no screws. It's just an adhesive that holds it. So, oh yeah, and two screws, two screws and adhesive. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this out, put this back together, and I'll show you a fresh install and uh, update of Windows 10. So it's the day after I actually filmed the um, this Dell Vostro, uh, not Vostro, another video, Dell Unspawn 15 3000 series. So just wanted to go over a little update and a little issue that I ran into with this computer. So the first issue I ran into was um, I had the beep noise, we fixed that, it was slow, put a solid state hard drive in there, had a power issue, blah, blah, blah. The computer was working, running, fantastic, beautiful. Popped in Windows 10 and installed. It was a little sluggish on install, no big deal, but it ran, okay. So I started using the computer last night, and when I started using the computer last night, just putting drivers and updates for Windows 10, it kept on lagging on me, like the mouse was getting stuck. It was real slow, would load a YouTube video, it would just delay, and it would skip, and it was choppy. I mean, this thing was like running real bad, and I'm like, this is not good. 
I'm supposed to give this computer back. <clears throat> it's supposed to be used for work purposes and yeah, I'm not happy with it. In fact, I actually thought in my opinion it was running worse than it was before. So did some driver updates, put everything fresh, updated to Windows 19, uh, 10, 1903, the newest update. I mean, every driver cleaned it out, cleaned up the hard drive, did some tweaks, whatever. Still doing the same thing. I mean, you would literally, and I can't demonstrate it, but you'd move the mouse, it'd pause, and then it'd jerk, and then it'd pause, and looking at the CPU usage, and this is, we'll talk about this in a sec, but this is actually a different OS on it. You, you uh, Looking at the CPU usage, I was only using at most maybe 20%. I still got 80% CPU usage for this quad core, and I was perplexed. I installed Windows 10, reinstalled it. I must have done it like three, four, five, maybe six times. I was up six times last night up till three in the morning doing this and it just still kept on running like crap and I could not figure it out. So got on the forums, nothing, updates, nothing. I gave up. <clears throat> I found a copy of Windows 8.1. Yes, it's Windows 8.1 and I installed it. Boom, no problem. Runs great. Mouse runs smooth as can be. CPU usage is staying low at five 10%. I mean, before Windows 10, it was showing at um, 10%. But another thing I did notice was that with Windows 10, <clears throat> my memory was always pegged at at least 50 to 60%. So this only has four gigs of DDR3. I think the issue was maybe this computer just needs to be upgraded to uh, eight gigs, considering the CPU is a little bit of weak sauce. Um, it averages, downclocks itself to 1.3, stays at 1.98 gigahertz. It could be the CPU is a little weak sauce for it, but but what this computer is going to be used for, Windows 8.1 is going to be more than adequate. It's going to get the job done. It runs, it has all the updates, no issues, everything runs smooth. So I just want to give an update on that one. I was not able to get Windows 10 running on this one. It might have been that it needs 8 gigs of RAM. I mean, a solid state should have fixed all the issues, but that seemed, didn't seem to do it. Could be, it needs more memory. Um, this one only has one slot, so I'd have to get an 8 gig DDR3 RAM chip. I don't have any lying around. So, I mean, if they want to do that in the future, we could do that to get it to Windows 10. But for right now, it runs great. It's smooth. I mean, it's fast. So just wanted to give this quick update on this computer. Um, if you have a Dell Inspiron 15, the 3000 series, at least the AMD version. It's probably because the AMD version I actually had another computer with similar specs. I think I had an A8, not an A8, I think it was an A6 as well on a desktop computer. And I ran into the same issues with Windows 10. And I also had to put Windows 8.1 in it just to get the computer ready for that customer. So um, if you're running this CPU, I mean, unless I miss something or somebody knows of an update I can't think of, just let me know, comment below. But for the most part, Windows 8.1 for the computer and what it's gonna be used for works great. So uh, just final update on this computer.